In this lesson, we're going to take a look at cookies. Now, that's not the crunchy chocolatey type, but the scary, mysterious ones that invade our privacy and steal our money. Well, actually, cookies have received quite a hard time since they were devised by Netscape in 1994. But a cookie is simply a small chunk of text data which is sent with every HTTP request. They're absolutely essential since the web is stateless. Now, what I mean by that is that every request a browser makes to a web server is independent. So if I load pagex.html from the server, it doesn't know whether I've loaded page y.html before that. So cookies allow us to maintain state. The browser sends cookie data to the server when it makes a request, and the server responds with the same cookie data, or changed cookie data, in the HTTP header when it returns the file or the image or whatever. Now either device can change the cookie at any time. And if we didn't have that facility, we wouldn't be able to implement systems such as shopping baskets and web application logons. Now incidentally, I've heard several server-side developers state that they don't use cookies because they're using sessions in PHP or whatever server-side language they're using. Now you should be aware that server-side session handling still relies on browser cookies. It's just that you're not aware of it when you're doing that. Now, of course, cookies can be used for sneakier purposes, such as tracking, but that's simply an application of the technology rather than a fault with it. So before we start, you should note there are several security and practicality restrictions applied to cookies. First is that cookies are domain specific. So domain1.com can't see domain2.com's cookies and vice versa. You can specify which domain a cookie belongs to, that's primarily of use if you're managing subdomains for applications. In addition, you can specify a URL path for cookies. Now, the default path is the one where the application resides. But you could, for example, set it to the root path, so it could then be examined and modified by other applications on your server. Next is that cookies can be set to expire at a certain date and time. Now, if you don't set an expiry date, the cookies will be automatically deleted when the browser is closed. Now those are known as session cookies and they're only temporary. Now interestingly, it's not actually possible to delete cookies in JavaScript. The only way you can do it is to set an expiry date to some point in the past. Cookies can be set as secure so they're only transmitted when an HTTPS connection is being used. Now finally, a domain can only set 20 cookies and each one must be less than around 4,000 characters. So don't expect to store huge quantities of data in them. So now the bad news. Cookie handling in JavaScript is shockingly awful, and that's because everything is handled using a single document cookie property. If you want to do anything clever, you need to use or develop a few cookie handling utilities. But first, let's see how cookies operate to show you an example. So let's open cookies.html and script slash cookies.js from the API storage working folder. So what I'm going to do first is set a cookie. So I run document.cookie equals, first I set the cookie name and I set a cookie value. So A is equal to 100. I then have a semicolon. And I can then put an expiry date. So expires equals, and now I have to put in a date which follows this format. So the cookie will expire on the 1st of January 2020. Next, I can set a path. Now, strictly speaking, I don't need to set the path because it will default to the one I'm on, but I'm just doing it for an example here. Okay, I can now set a couple of other cookies. And what I'm going to do is just copy and paste this because it's so long and horrendous. And we'll set cookie B to 200 and cookie C to 300. So let's just now show our cookie data. And we have an output div that we can put that in. So we can now save. Now, when we refresh our page, 
we can see that cookies have been stored. And this is the string that's output by document.cookie. And we can also use the cookies tab in Firebug to see our cookies. So we have an A of 100. You can see the path. And also we can see the expiry date. OK, that's nothing too exciting. But let's see what happens when we actually remove this cookie code. I'll just comment it out. Press refresh. And the cookies are still there. Now, of course, they're available to JavaScript. And of course, every server side application on that path or any subfolder of it. But obviously, using cookies like this is fairly horrible. Very difficult to extract cookie A, B, and C from a single string. So what I've done is written a set of cookie handling functions, and you'll find this in cookielib.js. Let's comment this out. Now this is a JavaScript module, which we've named cookie. Now the first few lines extract individual cookies from document.cookie. So what we do is take document.cookie and we split it into an array by semicolons. We then go through that array and split each individual name value pair into another array separated by equal signs. These values are then stored in a JavaScript object named cookie list. So the name of each property is the name of the cookie and it sets the value. And we've also used unescape here to make sure that characters are encoded correctly. So this variable cookie list now contains all our cookies as name value pairs. So moving down, we now have a set method for defining and updating cookies. Now it's passed a cookie name and a value. And we can also define an expiry. But rather than setting a date, which is quite awkward, we can set a number of minutes. Now that's easier and more useful. And we can also set a path should we need one. So this first chunk of code defines the expiry date if we've asked for one. So it takes the current date and adds the number of minutes, which is defined in milliseconds, and sets a string called cookie expiry. Now the next chunk defines the path, and then we save the cookie itself. Finally, we update our cookie list object. Now if this expiry date is set to some point in the past, the cookie's been deleted, so we can remove it from our object using delete. Otherwise, we add or update the property in the cookie list object. Next, we have a very simple delete method, which is just past the cookie name. Now, again, this just runs the set method with a negative minute here. So the cookie is set to immediately expire. And finally, we have a get method, which is past the cookie name, and it returns the appropriate value which it fetches from the cookie list object, or it returns undefined if we haven't defined a cookie of that name. And then the module returns our public method, so get, delete, and set. Now cookielib.js has been included on in our page already, so we can use it. So this time, we can run cookie.set a, and we'll set it to 101, and we'll set it to expire in 10 minutes. And we can do the similar thing for B and C, and even define different expiry times. That's far simpler than this code up here. Now let's also output. And this time we'll use inner HTML. And now we can use cookie.get. Just pass in the value of A as the name. 
You can do the same for B and C. And that should be it. Refresh our page. And so now you can see that we've set cookie A to 101, cookie B to 202, and cookie C to 303. And again, we can see those values in Firebug. And the expiry dates are slightly different. I can still remove this cookie setting code. If I run it, they're still there. And of course, I can also delete one or more cookies. So let's delete cookie A and perhaps cookie B as well. Refresh. And there we go. Only C is still available and the other two are undefined. So as you can see, it's far simpler than our original cookie code up here. Now you're welcome to use this cookie library in your own projects, but there's another idea I'd like you to consider. Now each server, as I mentioned earlier, can only set 20 cookies, which is quite restrictive. So what you could do is write a cookie library which stores multiple values in one cookie. Now perhaps you could do that by defining values in an object and then serialize and deserialize that object to a string using json.stringify and json.parse. Also, you could have a window on unload event which only saved the cookie when the page was reloaded or changed. But well, that's a nice little project for you to consider at some other point.